Hey, Kylie, how's it going? Right, welcome to our Hangout number three. This is our third month. Uh, so today we will be covering why your beliefs is holding you back. So today I'm going to go through some general questions. We've got Andy Bryce and we've got Richard Waddell here today to be our co-host. So thank you for coming, guys, and joining us on our <coughs> Hangout. If you guys want to introduce yourselves, that'd be awesome. Andy, if you could start first. Yeah, guys, uh, my name's Andy. Um, I've known Jono and Ick for, blimey, must be getting off about three and a half, four years now. Um, and I met them through um, my my previous job, um, which I, they may want me to talk about a bit later. But, uh, um, Richard Waddell here today to be our co host. So thank you for coming, guys, and joining us on our <coughs> Hangout. Uh, hey, what are you doing? If you guys want to introduce yourselves, that'd be awesome. Andy, if you could start first. Yeah, guys, uh, my name's Andy. Um, I've known John and Scott for blimey. Must be getting off for about three or four years now. Um, and I met them through... Ah, uh, shit, it's me, sorry. <laughs> yes, I know. That's why I asked, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's the live broadcast. <laughs> Sorry, Andy, if you could carry on. Sorry, <laughs> disrupt amateur. 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 We're gonna we're gonna start this again, right? Um, so I uh, read because it's recorded. <laughs> it's live now. Okay. <laughs> welcome, guys. Welcome to Limit Break Lifestyle Academy Hangout Number Three. We're gonna talk about belief system today and why it's important and why certain beliefs will hold you back in terms of when you want to go for success. And um, tonight's host is Jonathan, and we've got two co-hosts, Andy Bryce from Wealth Dragons, and we've got Richard Waddell. Um, he's a student and from the US, so we've got uh, someone from, with a different mindset from a different country, which is awesome. And uh, we're just going to have a general discussion today, no presentation, just relationship building. And uh, welcome all, and um, yeah, Jonathan, go with it. Right, so if we could have Andy introduce himself there again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like I say, yeah, I'm Andy. Um, Icky said Wealth Dragons. I am ex-Wealth Dragons. Um, I've been, I decided to take the step about, I don't know, about a month ago now and decided to sort of free up some more of my time, which... I learned through the Wealth Dragons, and that's actually where I met John Owen and Nick, and uh, took an amazing journey over five years, which has totally transformed my self beliefs, the way I think, and everybody around me. I think I like to try and influence others around me as well. But uh, yeah, what you guys are doing with this hangout is great. And uh, for those of you that don't know, congratulations on your book, John Owen. Well done, buddy. Proud of you. <laughs> and Richard, if you want to introduce yourself to the airport. Richard? Richard, you're on. We can't hear you, Richard. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're experiencing some technical difficulties with Richard. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, while well, Richard sorts his mic out, we will carry on with um, the topic. So, what belief systems is holding you back, um, Callie or Andy? Anyone? I mean, for myself, um, everyone says it's, it's, it's a, like self belief. I like to sort of reword it a little bit and say it's belief in yourself because I think that's the biggest key. Um, I think when you're talking about what's holding you back, it's all about a lot of factors that can affect that, um, outside peer pressures and things like that, but um, I've learned to question everything and ask why I'm doing something and, and 
also question why others have those feelings around what I'm doing as well because I'm not going to let anyone hold me back from what I believe in. There's no right or wrong answer. It's about what you want to do to achieve what you want to get. That's my personal belief anyway. Um, Nick, if you want to share what, what beliefs has been holding you back from doing what you've been doing? Well, the belief system I used to have was uh, a very negative one. I mean, um, I mean, I'll give you an example. I'm a, I'm really short. I'm I'm only five foot three. For those of you who know me, so um, in terms of let's say even dating <laughs> in the world of dating, right? I used to have a belief that you know short guys don't get the girls. Short guys can't attract the girls. And um, obviously, if um, nowadays you, you can read up on a lot of um, modern dating advice and a lot of them has proven that to be semi-true only, but it's really about, again, beliefs, it, believe in yourself, like Andy say, it's about confidence, and confidence used to be a big issue for me, and, and I, I mean, but in terms of belief system wise, I'd, I'd say when I was, when I was young, I, um, I really didn't believe much, I didn't believe in myself much and I really didn't rather I don't I didn't even believe in the people around me uh, I didn't know who could help and I didn't believe that they can help and that was a big issue and uh, but that was that so so that was holding me back personally but I've learned throughout the years that you know if you want to do well in life you need to have um, a different belief system a different way of thinking and it's, and I've, I've had a habit of um, growing in, growing myself into a more positive person. So I'm always thinking positive now, and I'm always um, thinking about um, what opportun what opportunities are out there, and how I can, um, you know, think 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 of more of the bright bright side. So I'm more of an opportunist now rather than a pessimist like I was before. So I believe that's very important. And. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say. Um, so when I was young, that's uh, I used to have a lot of negative um, belief system, and now it's, it's uh, a lot of them is positive, and it's, it has led me to where we are. Yeah. Okay, Richard, welcome back. <clears throat> Can you Thanks. now speak? Okay. Um. Well, as it said, I am a I live in the United States. I go to school in Wisconsin. I'm a psych major. Um, I grew up really introverted, so a natural tendency of introverts is to to take to skills or books, any information that teaches you how uh, how to deal with people or how to relate to people, as a way to, I guess, teach yourself to relate to people without actually doing it. So. I cultivated a lot of, I guess, uh, limiting beliefs through that. I always felt like when I would learn something that if it ever came up, I could just automatically use it. I could uh, I could call back on it and use it, and I know that it's not true. Um, today, I'm a much more confident person through the hobbies and skills I've acquired in the past probably two years. I'm still young, not as young as itch, but I'm still young. Uh, 19, 20 years old right now. Um, still trying to figure out my path. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to, uh, to reach the goals I want to reach. And that's that's where I'm at today. Awesome. Uh, if I knew where I was at your age, I'm sure I would have been where I am at, at the moment. <laughs> Very quicker, <laughs> very sooner than it was now. Uh, well, you guys know my goal is to be a millionaire by the time I'm 27. That is an awesome goal. One of my mentors was uh, a multimillionaire by by 30, so I'm sure you could do the same. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, well, if you have that belief, of course you can. You <laughs> do anything. So keep it, keep it up. I wish I had that belief when I was 19, 20. Um, it was only a few years after that I only found where I was, so 
it's never too late though, so we just have to keep working on that. <clears throat> yeah, Rich, Richard, you're very young for your age, and uh, I wish <laughs> I knew what you knew <laughs> when I was your age. <laughs> I wish I knew what I knew right now when I was your age, and uh, mm -hmm. I wish I was I had the the right people around me as well when I was your age because um, actually that actually speaking about belief system and people around us um. Yeah, I, I believe that um, what you, you know they, they say that your income and your success is um, influenced by the five people that you spend the t most time with, and which is the reason why we've created this hangout because um, we want to hang out with the right people. And uh, if I had the right peer group to hang out with when I was your age, boy, <laughs> life would be different. But um, yeah, nevertheless, I've met great people now. I've met you guys, and so. Um, You've got a head start, Richard. You've got a bright future ahead of you. Well, I've had some fantastic mentors along the way. <laughs> okay, so today's about self-belief system. I want to talk about fear. If anyone want to talk about fear? Where I read up that fear is, was it? Folks... <laughs> Expectations appear real. So, what is fear? Fear, limiting belief that is created by ourselves, and that is due to lack of confidence. Uh, the more you understand something, the better you have confidence in dealing with it. I wonder what your views are, Andy. You've spoken to thousands of people on the phone, face to face. What are the options and fear that you've heard most, um, and how, would, how would, what kind of solutions did you give for that? Well, um, you lot going on about age is making me feel a bit nauseous, to be fair, because <laughs> I'm 40 next year. <laughs> so if I knew what all of you guys knew now, I'd be, uh, um, yeah, I'd definitely be in a different place, um, a lot younger. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I've spoken to thousands of people on the phone um, in, in my last job especially um, and also in other jobs. I mean, I, I myself, like Richard, I was a right introvert when I was younger um, and I, I was really shy, really nervous. And the one thing that changed my life completely was um, slightly different to Richard's. I didn't go and do a lot of reading. I, I, I threw myself in and went and got a job in a restaurant and you're forced into having to speak to people and it's from that moment on that I started to realize that I could communicate and use these skills and that built my confidence up and my self-belief that I did have something in me to, to better myself. But going back to how I helped other people, the biggest, the, one of the biggest fears in people is the fear of failure and fear of rejection from people around them, um, whether it be family or friends. And... I know we've got a lot of sayings within sort of you know the, these programs we do or self education, red lighters, dream stealers, things like that. But I like to think that they're just uneducated. You know, they're they're not bad people. They're just not educated to think the way that we do. And I think if we have that outlook on on it, we can help those people. We we shouldn't ignore the fact that they've got maybe a, a negative attitude. It's, it's our role and our, it was my job to try and change these people's perception in the way that they look at things and the way that they deal with certain situations and, and put a positive spin on things. And I think if you can do that, you, you, you do manifest things in your life and you know you have a plan in place to actually go out there and achieve it. Um, but, yeah, I think the two biggest ones were... Um, fear of failure if they did try and didn't actually achieve it and and the fear of being rejected by close family members and friends and that's what stops them from stepping outside the comfort zone. That's very good. Um, I want to touch upon that a little bit. Um, you mentioned that um, people who are negative and um, pe people who have the fear of um, uh, rejection and all that and well, what you said was about them being uneducated, which is very true. Is because they haven't been exposed to that um, education and exposed to um, the power of being positive and all that. How I mean, um, how how I used to do it, 
I, I don't. I, I feel a bit <coughs> guilty and shameful. I, I, I'd say, but I don't regret doing it. But how I used to. I mean, they're, they're, I ha I've had a lot of poisonous people in my life, so I had to um, cut them out, <laughs> um, completely cut them out. And um, you know, some of them has been blocked by me on Facebook. They they just have no form of contact. So, <laughs> I, I mean, what is your point of viewing that, Andy? I mean, because you you obviously have a different approach. You you don't cut people out in your life, and you like to put a spin on them. I mean, what's the best way to go about doing this? And, <coughs> But while while staying away from the negativity, but while doing your best to try and sh try and shine your own positive view on them, I mean, any advice? Well, I mean, it's it's, it's difficult. I mean, the thing is, you, you did. I was dealing with two types of people. I was dealing with people that I was sort of trying to help get into maybe a program or, or some self motivation system that would help them, or or then we're talking about my friends and my family. Um, I'm very lucky that I've got a very supportive family. Um, they don't, they don't understand what I do, but they do fully p sort of support me, and I love them for that, you know. Um, but I have a <laughs> real close friends of mine. I can count my friends on one hand, and I probably only need about four fingers. And the rest of them, if they don't want to come on board, then I try and share with them what I do. I've tried to help even even family members to get involved with what I do. Um, and you give them that opportunity and try and share it. And if they don't, you can't force someone to do it. Um, one of, one of uh, John I know, um, John Lee, uh, one of our mentors, um, he used to say, you know, that this world will always need taxi drivers and cleaners. And he, he's absolutely right. If this world was full of entrepreneurs and, and positive thinking people then you know it, it wouldn't work it takes a very I think Ick, you mentioned before the webinar started uh, no it's John O 10% of people in the world think the way we do and try and achieve and do what we do um, but the world does need that other 90% so when it comes to sort of trying to give advice it depends on the person you can't force them to do anything you have to just Offer that information, offer that guidance, and let them run with it if they want to. Wow! Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Wow! Uh, Richard has disappeared again. <laughs> Never mind. Well, I want to touch up on my experience with um, with fear. So recently, I, as a lot of people probably will know by now, that I've quit my corporate job. So a lot of things that have gone through my head would be, um, what's my concern, um, and what my fear, and what's my security? Now, the general ones that would go through your head is, what's happening with your steady paycheck, or your monthly paycheck? Um, what happens to your career path? Um, you lose your managers or coaches to help you along the way to grow. Um, so there's a lot of things that go through my head at the moment, and obviously it's like solutions of how am I going to achieve my monthly paycheck? How am I going to cover my expenses? How am I going to grow from this situation that I'm in now? Do I just hang around and hope for something to happen, or do I create my own opportunities by creating my own doors to knock on? And these are things that I've learned from my development or through our mentors that you just have to be calm and think clearly about your goals and clearly focus on what you want to achieve. Because the more you focus on something, the more something will happen. The law of attraction is what comes to mind is the more you focus on it, the more you attract it. So a lot of people don't believe in it, but again, that's your belief system that's working towards your thinking. You know, are you do you believe that something will happen or do you create something that happens? And how would you achieve it? If an opportunity arises, do you take it or do you just let it down? There are a lot of decisions that you have to make instantly, but in this world that we are in now, in this fast growing pace of digital or growth or development or 
anything. You just have to make that decision on the spot. Um, sometimes when you're fearful, you just think about negative stuff, like what ifs, um, what if I don't make it, what if I fail, what if I get rejected. There's all these what ifs, but what if you don't do it, and what if you do achieve it? What happens if you do take the opportunity? What will you achieve? What kind of success will you gain? All these are the other what ifs that people don't think about when they're thinking of fear or concern, the pain that they probably experienced before. Um, so there's a lot of things that you have to consider and um, work towards and control your state. Um, this is another broad topic of controlling your emotions. When you can manage your emotions and your thoughts, that is when you master yourself and you master your beliefs. Um, so that's where, the, where I am at the moment. Um, it's not where a lot of people choose to make, <laughs> but I'm sure there are a good number of entrepreneurs who's been in the same boat as me, um, who's probably done what I did and have not looked back since. Uh, so yeah, that's my kind of experience right now. That's what I'd like to share. Sweet and Richard, would you like to share a bit about um, what, what what kind of belief system you used to have and what kind of belief system you have now in terms of um, what used to stop you and what is still stopping you? All right. Um, I apologize in advance if all my my psych major comes out, but I the the few things I wanted to talk about were two things. Is that uh. Similar to what Jana was saying, um, I wanted to talk about the creation of new beliefs and how beliefs are created or influenced. Um, I think the idea that you entertain the most becomes your belief. Whatever idea you have, in in any situation, there's you know there's an infinite number of possibilities. There's an infinite number of ideas that flow through your head the one you entertain the most and the one you focus on the most becomes your belief. Um, the other thing about beliefs is that I feel that beliefs are created by action and inaction in my opinion is also a form of action and when you guys are talking about fear I feel that a lot of fear is cultivated through inaction. If you have a goal or if you have something you really aspire to do if you're if you take an inactive stance in getting to that goal you become afraid and thus your belief system changes if I see going back to the itches example of dating and women and attraction if I see a girl that I think is cute and I in my head I want to talk to her if I don't do that I cultivate a negative belief about women or about myself through inaction Consequently, you develop beliefs through action as well because the uh, the myth about the myth about the relationship between action and thoughts is that you think before you act, and oftentimes that's not true. Oftentimes you act, and then your mind kicks in and gives you a logical explanation for doing what you did, and you feel you had that thought before you acted. In reality, you acted, and then you made an interpretation logically. So whatever you decide to do becomes your belief because you have to have a reason for doing it in your head. You can't do it just to do it. So um, if we're going to pull it back a little a little bit, um, belief systems I used to have was uh, I really... I had a I had a belief system that I in order to get everybody to like me I had to do everything I could for them. So instead of getting respect, I got appreciation, which is, you know, they're two completely different things. Um so I was a, I was a yes man. I was the guy that if you needed my help, I would immediately offer it and 
I felt good for about 15 minutes after helping them. I, I love helping people. That's what I live my life for. But after 15 minutes had gone past, I fell into depression and I felt I was being used. So I started to cultivate more negative belief systems that people were using me or um, it was better not to help people and, you know, confidence issues. And I got... I got past a lot of that in, uh, when I decided to take martial arts, and now I'm a fourth degree black belt in karate. Um, taking a progressive, taking a progressive skill, or <clears throat> getting involved in a progressive hobby is a great way to improve your confidence. If any of you, if anybody struggles with confidence, because um, the competence confidence loop, the more competent you get at that skill, the more confident you become. So by reaching my fourth degree black belt, I had become pretty confident. And to this day, I'm still very confident in my abilities as a martial artist. Um, the belief systems I have today is that uh, helping people is one of the most rewarding things to do with your life. Dedicating yourself to the service of others is one of the most rewarding things. And I feel immense pleasure when I help people. That actually will take the help. Um... I'm a very confident person now. I'm not sure if you can tell by watching or hearing me talk, but I'm a very confident person to this day. Um, I have enormous goals, and I feel I feel that having a strong support network is the only way to get where you want to be. That you need people in your corner, you need people supporting you in order to reach where you want to go. So those are my belief systems now, and I believe that. I'm in control of my life. I believe that I have absolute say over what I decide to do to this day. And there's nothing or anybody that can tell me otherwise and get away with it. So that's all That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, understanding another fellow martial artist. I too was um, a shy kid uh, when I was young. Also, I was bullied a lot in school. Now, that obviously affects your confidence issues during your growing up period when you're what, 12 to 15 to 16. You're bullied for, what, four years in a row? Five years? That's, that's some of the years that I was constantly in fear or in... That's when I lost belief in myself, in, in confidence as well. And that's also when I also took up my shots and grew my confidence levels. I looked up all the time <clears throat> because during when you're training martial arts, every time you have your head down, you get hit. <laughs> um, to say, keep yourself on guard and keep your head up so you're looking up all the time and you know <clears throat> no one will bother trying to attack you. That's the issue that I had, and that was the confidence that I gained from training in martial arts, you know, going through your belts that to your your seafood or your sensei will mentor you, coach you until you reach that level. That's the holding you accountable. That's where you same with what we do now, we always need someone to hold us accountable. For me at the moment, ache every week will probably kick my butt for not doing some work. <laughs> Um, so we hold each other accountable for projects and tasks like, have you made a video yet? No? Why not? <laughs> uh, have you made I don't know, a, a presentation yet? Uh, no? Why not? There's a lot of accountability and issues that you have to deal with nowadays. Um, I do believe in martial art and confidence in building yourself and just understanding yourself mentally and your goals because a lot of people nowadays don't have time to think and that's when that's why I quit uh, for my corporate role was because I really didn't have time to think for myself um, let alone helping other people if I can't help myself I can't help other people so I had to free up my time by quitting um, there's a lot of things that I want to do, that I want to achieve, but by having this corporate life that you really are limiting your time and I was physically burnt out 
um, to the point where I got ill past three to four weeks. I'm still recovering now. I'm not 100%. I'm probably about 70 to 80% recovered. But I was burnt out completely, mentally and physically. My training has stopped for three weeks. I used to go to gym five times a week. Um, I completely held back on that now. Um, so I'm giving my body a full rest. Um, but that's where I realized my I couldn't think for myself. I had no thinking time. I had no planning time. I had no time to do any actions whatsoever. Publishing my book was by leveraging my time. And if I didn't know how to leverage my time, uh, my book would be on hold right now. So there's a lot of things that I learned. Um, it is all down to your belief system at the end of the day. You know, I could have just held down and say, oh, I won't publish my book until it's ready. But when will it be ready is another question. Is it going to be 100%? Even to the point where I could get many people to copy, read, you know, proofread it, go through it, add in things, but will it ever be perfect? So my point was just launching the book as soon as it's been written, as soon as it's ready, the cover's ready, just launch it. Um, I could always improve that later today. Um, so there's a lot of things that I wanted to take control of. Um, you have to take control of your own life that a lot of people don't do. Uh, they, they let life interrupt and take over. They just go day by day doing the same thing on repeat on the loop. And they don't think for themselves. They stop chasing their dreams and they stop chasing their goals. So if you don't have a goal every month to achieve, then you will just be, you know, walking in a loop, or you'll be working nine to five, doing the same things every day, watching TV, or just going out with friends, hanging around, not achieving anything. Um, so that's where I believe that I should be achieving more than just a day-to-day -day life, where life is on loop. I want to do something different every day. I want to give more value to other people every day. I want to help as much people as I do as I can every day. There's a lot of a lot of content, a lot of education that I want to share with others. There's a lot of things that I want to do that I couldn't do when I was in the corporate life. So now that I have that time and that availability, I will be able to give more value and more education and helping others more. I could give my time out more to other people, or coaching lessons, or consulting. So it is that that opportunity of choice that people don't make. So that is the belief that I have. Um, you know, these bars or these belief systems or these fears, you just have to break them down and um, just go for it. Because if you keep holding yourself back, then no one else will, you know, will be able to help you because you are limiting yourself. Um, so I don't know if anyone else wants to share. Oh, what is holding you back from giving up and start and starting your startup? Okay, well, there's nothing holding me back anymore, obviously, since I quit my corporate job. Uh, now it is. It is down to fear. Where where do you get your lead business? Where do you get your your leads from? Where do you get this? How do you attract? You know, am I going to offer? What services am I going to offer? How am I going to give more value to people? These are all questions that I have asked myself, and I've also answered and written down. I've pinned these up all. I've got to do list, um, and I have end of month goals that I want to achieve things by. So every week I should be making one video a week, at least one video a week. I should be writing more books. Um, there'll be another book coming out end of this month. So maybe I'll publish another book once a month, then I'll have you know, maybe more than that after, after a year. So we'll see how that goes. <coughs> That's great. Thanks, John. I have a um, topic I want to bring up. Um, most most people's belief that tends to hold them back. Um, 
usually is um, one. Obviously, Andy mentioned before is um, one is they um, they don't believe in themselves. Um, that's obviously number one. But also, the second belief that um, people tend to have that I realize is that they don't believe in the certain product or a certain service or a certain method or any certain way will work. So um, if someone was to teach forex trading, for example, and everyone's getting results, whereas someone else isn't, then you know where where do we stand? <laughs> so um, so one obviously is not believing in oneself, but um, the other one is also believing. Uh, what's important is believing in what you do and believing in what methods and what um, what vehicle you have. For success is, and it's, it's truly believe. I mean, even even someone who sells a product, if you don't believe in that product, you're not going to convince anyone else. Because if you don't, you yourself don't believe in the in the product that you're selling, no one else will believe in that product as well. So I believe that whatever product and service you are holding, um, you are you are selling or, or giving to 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 the marketplace, you have to have absolute faith and believe in it as well. Um, uh, how I st I want to I want to touch upon um, something called the law of attraction because uh, me and Andy uh, previously talked about this before, and um, it was what brought me to this world of entrepreneur. To be honest with you, um, I was um, just a brief story. Very shortly, um, I was lost. I was a lost kid once, and I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. And um, I it was the law of attraction. It was the film The Secret that I watched, and then. That kind of made me think differently. Basically, the way I thought was, what if, what if this was true? I didn't, I didn't, obviously, I wasn't being a naive kid and say, right, you know, yeah, this, this must be it. But I said, what if this wasn't really true? I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. And then that was, in actual fact, the reason why I started um, thinking more positively. And and what happened was, I built up this habit of. Um, Continuous thinking of positive things, and um, that built up a habit. And um, Andy, what would you like to share with us in terms of um, your point of view in the law of attraction? Well, I think uh, I think that everyone knows the book, The Secret, um, and the film, The Secret, and it's it's had a lot of sort of media attention, especially lately as well. Um, my my personal view on on the law of attraction is that. There are a lot of people out there, Rick, that, and I'm sure you've, you, we've all come across them, that they, they read The Secret or, or they watch the film The Secret and they go home and they, they've been to see a mentor or, or guru on the subject and they, they go home and they just believe that they want to become a millionaire and all the money will just land in their laps. And we all know, you know, I think Richard, I think uh, this first time I've heard Richard, I think he's a very motivational guy is very confident guy and I think what what he touched on earlier was that if you create one thought in your head out of all the others then that is the one you will believe in and I think by taking the action that will automatically get you what you want now with regards to the law of attraction the way that I see it and I know there's a story that I will always remember it um, and the conversation we've had and I interpret it different to you um, I think do you mind me sharing it? Yeah, go for it. Go for yeah. it. It'll be a joke. <laughs> I, remember we, I remember we were both at an event, and um, I remember we were sitting down at breakfast, and you told me the story, and you, I think you'd just been introduced to the secret, and you were jogging, and you were thinking of, like, your energy was low, and you're thinking of a protein bar, and then one appeared in on the street, and you picked it up, and I was like, okay, and I was like, at the time, because I was still quite naive at the time, and I just thought, well... What a load of rubbish! And then really? I don't remember talking about a protein bar. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it could have been. You know, like I was just, I was just thinking in my head at the time, what a load of rubbish! And it's only through education and and realizing that it's a manifestation of thoughts. That's to what the law of attraction is, and it's what Richard said, but in different, in a different way. The more you think about something, the more it's, it's like when when you think of something, you see more of it around. 
because you're actually thinking of it. So it's about actually, let's say, for example, um, I want to go out and um, get a job earning me 100 grand a year. The more I think about that, the more chance I'm going to be looking at adverts in a newspaper or on a website advertising in the region of £100,000. So the, the likelihood of me getting a job in the region of what I want is going to be a higher probability. So it's about actually going out there and getting it because you're thinking about it and manifesting it in your life. It's not just going to happen. It's down to what Richard said, and that's taking the action. And that starts with taking baby steps and getting baby results. If you can manage one step, you build up confidence. Two steps, you build, and it's, a, it's down to confidence and social proof. Uh, that's all it is. It's so a lot of people believe in social proof, and like Richard touched it on another thing. He won't let anyone stop him getting from him getting himself what he wants because he totally believes in himself. The amount of people I've spoken to over the last five ten years doing what I do, the or one question always comes up: What results have other people got? My my answer to them is. Do they pay your mortgage and pay for your holidays? Because it doesn't matter what other people's results are. It's about the action that you take and the results that you get that will make the difference. And it's all about thinking of an, uh, thinking in the right way, manifesting something in your thought process, and putting a goal in place and a process in place to achieve it and get what you want. That is it. That's the way I think of the law of attraction. Excellent. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, um, from what I, from from my, my very much like Andy's as well, it's, um, to be honest with you, um, Tony Robbins touches on this, um, it's basically energy flows, what, you know, your, 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 your energy flows where focus goes, so it's whatever you focus the most on, because when you focus and put all your energy in one particular thought, you, you will eventually produce the action, you know, if, if, and, and it's, it's about, Going, it's going deeper than that. It's, it's about what is a must for you. You know, wh what is a must? If if your child or a family member that you lo love so much is dying and you need that money to save their life, you will find a way, regardless. And that, <laughs> to me, that is the law of attraction. That is that is the, the law of attraction is basically what is a must for you, and it's what you think about the most of the time, and it's what action you will take to to go to go up, go you know, to take that, take you further to, to, to that goal. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, like, like Andy say, a lot of people, they don't understand what, how the law of attraction really works. And, and they believe that if you think of something and then if you just put all your energy and thinking about it, it, it will somehow appear in front of your life. It doesn't work that way. You've got, the way it works is you got you got to do you got to do something you got to take certain action and you got to work towards it and it takes a lot of hard work and it does not just take daydreaming because <laughs> um, if that was the case I would have been a millionaire by now because I, I used to daydream a lot <laughs> but yeah uh, but uh, uh, the reason why I wanted to touch upon this subject was because uh, it, it's been a popular subject and. Um, I'm going to cut this particular conversation out and probably re uh, repost it as a different recording. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing, Andy. And um, and I, I, or, or, um, what I really wanted to say was um, the reason why um, I wanted to give some credit to the law of attraction was because it does encourage positive thinking. It does encourage a a different kind of behavior. And if it wasn't because of that, if, if, if it was because of the law of attraction and the film The Secret, I probably wouldn't have given positive thinking a, a, a thought. And the reason that I, you know, the, the fact that I've I given it a go and I've tried it and i practiced it, i built a habit. And habit is so important. And in, in actual fact, we want to do a webinar, another hangout on habit next time, on, on the subject of just habits. On, you know what do successful people do? What what are their habits? And and you know, you'll find that successful people have a different habit and a different lifestyle than poor people and and people who are unsuccessful. But yeah, that's another topic. But um, br brilliant. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, Richard, any yes, thoughts? Of course. <laughs> um, 
I think I think another belief that people have that holds them back is that change is impossible or that change is too hard. Uh, a, a great, a perfect example is somebody that refuses to, or somebody that has a very hard time giving up smoking or giving up drugs. If you ask any any anybody addicted to drugs, heroin, whatever, they know that it's bad for them. They know they should quit, but quitting oftentimes feels too hard to do, so they don't try in the first place. And I think that's, if not the biggest uh, limiting belief. Even in some cases, it's uh, it's more limiting than fear. Um, feeling that change is too hard. Um, and a good way to get past that, if you feel something can't change, is to think about the pros and cons of it. What are the benefits of not changing, and what are the benefits of changing? And you'll oftentimes you'll find a lot of motivation to change after that. I've done that for myself in the past when I felt something wasn't possible to change, or when I felt something was um, too hard to change, where I didn't want to put forth any effort to change something. I guarantee you. After I made a list of the pros and cons of changing and not changing, I decided to change. I took action and I changed. So that's that's another limiting belief, and that's a, a fantastic way to get past it. That's a great way to create motivation for anything in your life. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, that. Um, I I want to elaborate on that. Make it, writing down the list of pros and cons. That's brilliant. Um, I would go even one step further. Rather than writing down um, the benefits of not changing, I would write down the pain of not changing. You know, what if I carried on smoking, for example? I don't smoke, but if I did smoke, and I and if I carried on smoking, what would be the consequences? What would be the pain? And if you write down the list of that, rather than its benefit, boy, you're definitely going to take some massive action. So thank you very I, much, Richard. I actually have. Uh an old list of mine at, at my house back in Chicago of uh, a pain avoided and pleasure gained list that I still have. It's 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 on my wall because every time you know every time I felt uninspired to change, I would look at it and I would see right then and there that I had to change. It became it became a must for me to change because I had that list. That's right, and a lot of people actually don't write down what. Um, their goals are in life, and a lot of people don't even write these down as well. They want, you know, people want to, people want their life to change, and people want to, you know, to, to succeed in life, but they don't write down their plan. They don't write down the pros and cons, and they don't write down what it is that will take. Um, if you see on my billboard here, I've got lots of things written down, and these are my plans for this for the for the next three years. So, um, a lot. The, the funny thing is, a lot of people don't write these down, and um, various of my mentors say that you have to write down goals, you have to write down plans, you have to have specific steps that you know you can take within a certain time frame so that you can take those baby steps and move and move yourself up another um, up the ladder of success. But yeah, well yeah, that's 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 brilliant, Richard. Jonathan, back to you. Awesome. Wow, <laughs> some very interesting discussion going on there. Now I want to elaborate on when you said take uh, what Andy said, taking baby steps. Now what I would call um, simple discipline uh, or how to have a constant engagement of progress and development. Now if you don't have something that you keep track of, you know, how do you know you're growing with it? Or how do you know if the task or is growing or developing at all? It's like a project plan. Like many people don't do project plans because they don't know how to, or they don't know what to track. But for instance, if I just, for instance, my book that I just published, <clears throat> I'll probably have over 20 downloads since I launched it yesterday. Maybe, maybe more. I haven't checked, but maybe by end of the month I will have 50. Then I would do more promotion. Do I promote it? Do you try and achieve. I try to achieve. Am I trying to achieve by how many books I'm going to sell, or how many people has the book helped, and how would I track that? <clears throat> and I, I also incorporated a a list um, to subscribe to my list, the email list in my book. Now, 
through that, I could probably track down how many people would want to be interested in learning new tools or new strategies that I'll be sharing with them. So that's another way for me to track how many people want to learn how to learn these strategies, these tools. Who wants them to know these, you know, these to help their businesses grow? Um, so that is constant engagement of progress and development that I use. Um, these are for other things I do as well, um, in terms of my life, in terms of Project uh, Limit Break Lifestyle Academy. You know, what kind of development we have, what kind of content we're going to be giving, you know, what kind of value or content, or what webinars we're going to be doing next. That is all planned out. This is what, this is how we know what we're going to be doing. This is how we keep track and progress. How many people come to our webinars? How many people actually find this webinar actually helpful? You know, how many people have been subscribing or joining our webinars? How many people are in our group? These are all signs of development. Uh, that encourages us to go in because if we don't see any progress, then maybe we'll just be thinking, oh, it's actually not helping or giving any value to anyone. But at the end of the day, it is something that we're passionate about. We want to keep doing this. And the more encouraging signs we see by tracking these kind of figures or numbers, it keeps us going until we know what's what's happening. Um, I've also had comments where people wanted to was thanking me for creating this hangout, and I was, you know, I was I was surprised that people would would be giving me the the thank you, or I appreciate that people find this useful. I'm really grateful that people do find this useful because. It's a lot of hard work that me and X gone through. Um, there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of fear that we had. Um, there's a lot of breakthroughs that we had. Um, there's a lot of limiting beliefs that we also had before. But some of you may have known the story that um, a friend of ours passed away um, due to thinking differently. And that was the trigger for me and Nick to kick ourselves off the bat and said, had they known what we known, had they thought about what we known, you know, the way they think may have been different. They may not have taken their own lives by them. These are all beliefs that we had. Um, but what was limiting us was we was fear of being sharing. Um, it was giving somewhat, you know, people value and the fear of sharing content that's not ready. We don't feel it's ready. We don't feel we were ready. And that was a lot of limiting beliefs that that held us back from helping others. That really did, you know, uh, it frustrated me to the point where I really wanted to help as much people as I can, while I can, while my heart is still beating every day. I don't know if I was to be alive the next day or the day after, but it is things that we take granted for because of our culture or our belief systems. And so while I can, I would want to share as much as I can to as many people as I can. And that's a mission. That's a must for me. That me and Nick has created, it is a must. Um, so how... How, how is this a reality? You know, it is, it is as real as you can get. The more we can share online, we've got so many, you can make YouTube videos nowadays, you can share to thousands of people, millions of people. What, what, what was helping, holding us back was we were feeling that our content wasn't perfect. But what, is, what counts as perfect, you know? You will never get something perfect because you will always find something to develop it. And there's, there was a lot of limiting beliefs that we had. Um, so we were just sick of it and you just had to really get yourself out of it and by doing that was just taking action. Literally just do it. You have a you have something to say? Make a video of it. Do it. Publish it online. If it's not ready, who cares? Publish it online. See who, who will find it useful. You will find some one out of ten people you will find it useful. Even if it helps that one person out of ten people 
my goal is you know is achieved. I've I fulfilled what I wanted to share. I I've I've done what I wanted to 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 to, to deliver. So there's a lot of desire and doing greater things and what 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 will push you to do something and that was having our friend passing away was was the trigger to, for us to must do something to help as many people as and to think differently just to do something for their own selves you know to 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 not sacrifice their lives because it's it's such precious moment the amount of people that you that suffers because of it yeah, no one likes people pass away, but it is part of our life. Yes, it is. But had you had a choice to do things differently, why not? It is something that you you must find yourself. You know, why why would you be doing what we're doing now if you didn't believe in it? Why are you here in this hangout if you don't believe in it? If you didn't believe in us, I appreciate that you are here because you believe in us, and I'm, I can really appreciate that you believe in us, that we can help you. So that's kind of the kind of desire that you want to build. Um, when you're having a limiting belief, you want to build that desire. What is it that that making you do this? Is it that someone in your family is suffering? You know, for me, it was my parents are just working the takeaway. They don't earn that much. And I really want to give something back by being financially free, and by doing that, I could help them pay their bills or pay their expenses or treat them to holiday, things that they have done for me when I was a kid, when they raised me, because I know how much money that they've spent in doing so. And the only thing I could do is just give back. And before I could do that, is is becoming free myself. So. Until I can help myself, I can't help other people. So there's a lot of things that you you have to be hungry for. Like Les Brown says, "Are you hungry? How hungry are you? You know, are you? It's that that hungriness of life or achievement that you wanna be fulfilled. So you gotta be hungry. It is that standard. You know, you have to you have to lift or raise your standards. Hanging out with like-minded people, yes, these hangouts that we created, that's another step. You could always go to other networking events where you'd be hanging around with like-minded people, depending on what you want to do. But you have to create that action by doing it. So if you don't do something, it's you're just limiting yourself by not doing it. So what's stopping you is, is a question that you have to answer yourself. Why are you doing it in the first place? Um, you know, are you afraid to miss? You know, are you afraid to miss being out there? For people like, I don't know, Jordan Belfort, Belfort, sorry. <laughs> like his desire was becoming. Was it? What was it? Was it? What kind of figure did he make when he was like twenty-three or twenty-seven? He was like forty mil or something, like forty billion dollars. It was just something like ridiculous, like. For him, that kind of amount was nothing. That kind of belief system that drove him, that desire to be the richest or making as lot of money as you can, that that for me is like inspiration. Like, despite what he did was illegal, that his desire at that point when he was building that 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 wealth, that creation of of drive, that is the kind of Mentality you have to have when you're when you're in this. Um, so when you're having this limiting belief, what 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 do you think was like limiting Jordan's um, belief system? Did he think, oh, I'm gonna make uh, one thousand pounds this month, or do you think he's gonna go, I'm gonna make in one day one million pounds? You know, what kind of mentality do you have for your goals or what you're achieving? So that's what I wanted to share. Um, just raise your game. That's when you don't have any belief system. You just, you just raise your game. Really, you just take it to the next level. You just think. You don't think. You don't even think about it. You just do it. It is just taking that action. Just just throw everything out the window and just do it. 
just get on with it because you don't know what happens the next day. How you know if if you knew if you knew that timeline in your head, would you be doing it differently? Would you do things differently? You know that's the kind of if Steve Jobs knew how, how long he had left. That's why Apple is where it is today because he's created this pipeline probably for the next 20 to 30 years of Apple's you know products product lines. It's probably down to the next 20 to 30 years of Apple's growth and development. But that's because he knew how much time he had left. So if you had that, that, that knowledge of knowing how much time you had left, would you do things differently? You know, I'm sure I would. Yeah. That's what I want to share, guys. Thanks, Jono. Um, running out of time, so um, just to just to summarize everything together, um, like Jonah says, the reason, I mean, our, our limiting belief that was stopping us from doing this hangout in the first place was that um, we wanted to be too perfect. We wanted our content to be rich. We wanted to provide maximum value for everyone. And we wanted to get everyone on board before we actually started doing this. In actual fact, by delaying our actions, um, not taking action in time, we lost a friend, which which devastated us because if she, if we had started this early and if she had gotten involved in this hangout, would she have had a you know a different thought? Would she have not decided to you know end her own life? And that was the trigger for us, like Jonathan say, and like like Richard and, and Andy say, you know you've got to take action. And we decided to just um, take action. That's what it is. You know we're not perfect. You know, some people will not find value from our hangouts, but some people do. And maybe it might just be that one in a million person who will find absolute, you know, life-changing value from our hangout. And if that is that one, if there is that one person out there that we managed to save before, you know, she done anything, before he or she does anything silly, then we are happy. We are glad to do this hangout. And so, I just want to say a final thank you that um. Uh, thank you to you all who has um, joined us online today, and um, we appreciate your support. And we hope to carry on seeing you every month. And um, we we would like you to share this with your friends and family. You know, just come and listen to us, and just come and join us. And um, if ever uh, um, uh, if you have anything of value to share with us, we would like to make you a co-host as well, just like we have done with Andy and Richard. And so we want to also. Give a big uh, round of applause to um, Richard and Andy. Thank you for coming, and <laughs> uh, we really appreciate your time here. Uh, you, you guys have been a great support, great mentors, um, and um, carry on doing what you're doing. And you know, uh, uh, we'd like to um, hear from you more soon as well. Um, we've got uh, Jenning on the chat room who's just raised a great idea on. Um, a challenge, a monthly challenge, a 30-day challenge, and uh, that's a really good way to start a tradition, I, I believe. Um, <laughs> I would like to propose a challenge to all the audience, and that is to, I challenge you to start thinking positively for every single day, for 30 days, for the next month, and see how your life changes, just like I did when I first, um, uh, when, when I first touched upon the law of attraction. Give it a go. Don't believe in anything. You don't have to believe in anything. Just, just have, just build that habit of thinking positive, Ooh. and stop complaining. Don't complain, and um, think of the bright side for everything. And the the way I always thought about doing it is, I don't complain, and I always believe that something happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason, and there must be every 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 disaster is disguised as a blessing. That's the way I see it, and um, I challenge you to. <laughs> to yeah, to to screw it and just do it and <laughs> just like Andy says, just like Richard Branson says, screw it, just do it. Um, that's my challenge to you all. Try it for thirty days and then see how it goes. And then um, you can let me know after um, in the next hangout and see how how that has um, helped you or changed your life. Or if it doesn't, fair fair game. But at least you give it. At least you tried. At least you gave it a go. But that's my challenge to you for the next month. Um, I, I also want to um, invite all of you back 
um, next month. We're going to do this uh, this differently. We won't do it in a webinar style like this. We're gonna do a actual Google Hangout. So um, we won't have co-hosts. We will have everyone. Um, be, uh, everyone will be able to speak to each other, and everyone will get a chance to um, talk to each other and get to know one another. And um, the goal for next we, uh, for next month's Hangout is really to build relationships with one another, just to get to know um, each other and to share a bit of story of each other because for the, for the moment I mean um, this is great for, because we've got value to give to you, we've got content but um, a lot of the audience here are just um, typing and interact with you that much. So next month we would like to do a bit of um, relationship building and more engaging with you a lot so I would like to invite you all to join us next month and do invite your friends and family. Awesome, thank you very much guys. So I look forward to seeing you all next hangout. And once again, thank you Richard and thank you Andy. Thank you. I'll, I will definitely be back. Awesome. <laughs> it's been a pleasure guys. Thank you. Alright, Andy, any, any last words before you leave? No, I mean it's been great again guys. I mean what you've done is amazing. I'm really proud of both of you. Yeah. Lovely to listen to Richard as well. I think uh, a very motivational, sort of inspirational guy. And uh, we should get him over to the UK and he could be our mentor, all of our mentor. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thanks everyone. It's been amazing. Thank you. Awesome. So thank you very much. And uh, we'd like to say goodnight. And I'll see you next month. Thank you, guys. See you next month. Yeah, bye, everybody. <laughs>